Do you like Stardew Valley? I do. So I wanted to talk about how you could achieve some of those mechanics from Stardew Valley in GDevelop. Beginning with the interaction marker, which is how the game knows where to pick up an object or strike with a pickaxe or when you can talk to a character. So I made this little target and that's going to be our marker. In Stardew Valley, the marker sticks on a grid and stays within a certain distance from the player. For the grid, we installed the extension Snap to Grid, and then to make it stick by the player, we use this action, where we change the position of the object to equal the X position of the player plus this expression, which is Clamp. Clamp is an expression that lets you add a min and max to your value, and in this case, that's going to be the mouse's X position minus the player's X position. And we use 14 on either side because the grid is 16 by 16, and this will keep it within 9 tiles around the player. And then we do the same thing for the Y position as well. Then to make sure the marker is always below the player and objects, we set the Z order to always be 100 below the player, so there's no chance of it overlapping with something else. And then finally, with that snap to grid extension, comes this action, where we snap the object to that 16 by 16 grid, with an offset of 8 in the X and 8 in the Y. And that's because I've moved the object's origin to the center, which is 8 in and 8 down. And now you can see the object is following the player, and no matter where the mouse goes, it won't go further than that 9 tile distance. Next we need to animate the player. So for this top down character, we have the up, down, left, and right, but then further down we have the same setup, but it's for an interacting animation instead. And so in the event sheet, we can see that if you're not talking to another character, and your animation is less than 4, which are the first 4 walking animations, and you release the left mouse button, we change the animation of the player to what it was before, plus 4. So if the animation was down, we add 4 to it, and now the animation is interacting down. And then we play the animation, because if you weren't moving, it was paused in the above event. And then finally, if the number of the animation of the player is above or equal to 4, which is one of the interaction animations, and the animation finishes playing, set the animation back to what it was by subtracting 4 from the current animation. So now that we have the marker to check where to hit, and an animation that plays, we can set up an event where we hit the tree. Starting with, if the marker is in collision with the tree, and if the player's animation is equal to or above 4, so they're interacting, shake the tree object, and add 1 to an object variable that we added, called hits. And then if that variable hits is equal to or above 4, and in Stardew Valley that number would change based on the tool that you're using, but for the sake of the video I just set this to 4. So if that number is reached, we use an event to repeat 3 times, and create the wood object at the X and Y of the tree, and then delete the tree. And then to make the wood that drops out of the tree scatter and then come to you, we install the Boyd's Movement extension, and then apply it as a behavior to the wood object changing some of the values, most importantly these three, making them 0, 0, and 2, so they'll separate when they spawn. And for this wood object we have two animations, one that's called spawn and one that's called pickup. So when they're first created, they have the spawn animation. And with that, using the Boyd's extension, the wood intends to move away from the player. But when that animation finishes, the animation is set to pickup, and the separation weight is set to 0 so they'll stop moving. And then when the animation is pickup, and the player is within 5 pixels, we delete the wood. And if the wood is a little bit further away, but it's below 20 pixels, we'll use this action to move the wood towards the player, when they're within that distance. And this method of harvesting objects can be used for the stone, picking up crops, or chopping down trees. But that leaves us with one of the most important parts of Stardew Valley, which is the growing of crops. And in Stardew Valley, the system is pretty simple, so we'll get rid of these trees and I'll show you the plant object I have. It has a set of animations that show it growing until it becomes a flower. And then I have this tree object that has the same, just with less animations. And I've given both of them a variable I called growth, and now I'll put a bunch of these into the game. So in the event sheet, I have this event set up. In this example I'll be using when the E key is pressed, but in Stardew Valley this will be when you go to bed and the night ends. So if you have plants, or trees planted, this is what the events would look like. So for the plant, when the day changes, we would pick all plants, and change the variable growth by adding 1 to it. And then check to see if the growth variable is at a certain point, 
And if it is, change the animation. Because the animations of the plants don't change every night, just at different stages of growth. But the trees work differently in Stardew Valley. The trees have a 20% chance to grow every night. So we pick all tree objects and change the variable growth of those objects to random in range 0 to 4. And then if the animation is below 3, which is fully grown, and the variable growth is equal to 4, which is a 20% chance out of 5 numbers that could be picked from, change the animation of the tree by adding 1 to it, which is just a different way of doing it than how it was done for the plants. And now the plants will grow at a consistent rate, but the trees will be a little random. If you'd like to learn about some more game mechanics, like top-down movement and z-ordering, check out our top-down RPG video. And if you want to learn about combat, we have a video for that as well.